Hinkson is the slight favorite for gold. Saya Matut, Hinkson, Wallace Wilson, Jennings, and this. Definitely a big favorite for this semi final. Athalia Hinkson of Guyana. She goes in lane number four. Lane 5, 11.66 and 11.58 this season, so she's been in very good form. But from what we saw at 400 qualifying earlier today, we know that the Guyanese team very much on a high. And the athletes seem to be dropping personal best performances at will. Matut of French Guiana in lane three lane there. The there is Hingson, the Kylie favorite Wallace. in four. Kylie lane Wallace, the Bohemian, Priya knows Wilson. she has an outside shot of being in the lane final. Priya Kikos. Wilson of Bermuda, a 12.50 performer, will have to be better than that today to be in the championship race later on. Chloe Jennings of Turks and Caicos and Viz Ampunir rounding out the field. Four semi-final races in the under 17 girls, 100 meters. Only the winner guaranteed a spot in the final, plus the next four best on times. Stand up, stand up. What, what, what happened? Huh? Huh? Chief starter Ludlow Watts just trying to figure out what the issue is with one of the athletes before they send this first seat off and running. Seat of the under 17 girls 100 meters. The winner assured a spot in the final later on. The 100 finals, as Gerard pointed out earlier, will close the show. We are 11 minutes past the scheduled start of this first heat. On your marks. And once again, Ludlow Watts gives the athletes the command and sends them to their marks. First heat of the under 17 girls, 100 meters. Athalia Hinkson of Guyana, the favorite in lane number four. Once again, no Natrice East of Jamaica. She's decided to go 200 Set. only here. Off they go, pretty quick gun and Hinkson, beautiful through the drive phase, takes control of the race. Wallace of the Bahamas in third position with Matuta of French Guyana in second, but Hinkson blows the field away in qualifying for the 100 final for under 17 girls. 11.86 on the clock, that was never in doubt. It's Hinkson who wins the first semi-final race of the under 17 girls 100 meters, and that looked pretty good. Here's another look at it. Nice, beautiful drive for Hinkson, compact through that drive phase, up into a sprinting motion and easing away from the rest of the field as we're joined by Terry Finished here. That's a good looking run from the Guyanese. I heard to get things uh, kicked off this afternoon and uh, national record holder also a fine long jumper and uh, she'll be pleased with her execution here this afternoon having a quick conversation at the conclusion of uh, her opening heat. We'll get confirmation of her performance. Second fastest Guyanese junior of all time. But she's still 
only a youth. Tremendous quality she has. Althalia Hinkson of Guyana. So she has secured her spot automatically into the final later on. And now we get ready for the second semi-final race in the under 17 girls 100 meters. This one involves the Dominican junior record holder, Carol Etienne. She'll run in lane number four, a semi-finalist last year, Carol Etienne. No, she has the quality to go significantly better this time around. Belongs to Athens Athletics Club uh, back in uh, Dominica. Dominica just signing a new deal with ASICS earlier this week. So they're kitted out in their brand new ASICS gear. And of course, uh, she's at school in Jamaica. Yeah, at Edward Allen High School under the watchful eyes of fantastic high school coach. Michael Dyke has coached so many fantastic Jamaican junior sprinters, most recently. The Clayton twins, Tia and Tina, Serena Cole as well, just part of the long line of fabulous Edwin Allen High School sprinters on the girls' side. As we have a look at the lineup, Jones of Bermuda goes in lane two, Shade John of Grenada in three, Carol Etienne is in 4, 11, 69 her best, has the Dominican junior record, was only a semi-finalist last year. There's Tobias of Trinidad and Tobago in lane number 5, that's Zaya Tobias. Kenitha Fraser of Guyana goes in 6, the Guyanese number 2. Norma Vinga of Martinique in 7, and Kalanda King of the Turks and Caicos in lane number 8. Only Etienne in this field has gone under 12 seconds. So makes her a massive favorite to qualify automatically for the All final. I would back to bias certainly to emerge from here. She's uh, done up, really up. well at stand the school championship in uh, Trinidad and Tobago, winning uh, four gold medals for Scarborough Secondary. Tobias in five. Once again, four races at this stage of the under-17 girls, 100 meters, the winner of each to advance automatically to the final, plus the next four best on times, of course. Goes without saying, I think. Confirmation of the first heat, uh, Hinks Hinkson, 11.84. Uh, a negative 3.9 meter per second win. Guadeloupe's Saha, second in 12.44, so well off the pace. T -t Tell him to stride out here. Tell him to stride out. And there again Tell we hear the chief starter, Ludlow Watts, telling, giving instructions for On the athletes marks. to stride out. Not sure, because now they've been sent to their marks. Second heat of the under-17 girls, 100 meters. Winner sure to be in the final. We suspect Carol Etienne of Dominica with Tobias of Trinidad and Tobago expected also to go well. Set. Etienne in four, Tobias in five. Very good start for the Grenadian, John. And John is going well now. Etienne steps forward. John has a problem. And Etienne flies away from the field with Tobias coming through late, but takes second position. 12-0-1, the flash time for Carol Etienne. She came in as favorite, and she delivered confidently. Strong run from uh, the young lady from uh, the Nature Isle. I think she's got a bit of green in her hair as well to complement her brand new uniform. 12.05 confirmed as her time. So she'll go through as a heat winner. But the 14 year old from Trinidad and Tobago, also with a fine run. We saw John there with a nice start, but she looked as though she might have just had a little bit of a problem about halfway down the track, Ricardo. Yeah, very much the case. I think she felt something. And that thwarted her progress. 
As Etienne stepped away, opened our season, Etienne with a Dominican junior record of 11.70. Has progressed to 11.69. 12.05 here in a negative 1.2. Tobias 12.50. Jones 12.75 for Bermuda. And John 12.77 for Grenada. So as of right now, that 12.75 is the bubble time. With 12.44 and 12.54 have been produced in the first heat as well. But the relaxation on Etienne's face as she came across the line, beautiful to watch. So two semifinal races out the way in the under-17 girls, 100 meters. The third of four coming up next on track. Just one athlete who has gone below 12 seconds in this lineup as well, Pashana Lee Blake of Jamaica. Would have gotten on the plane as the Jamaican number two is now the Jamaican number one in the event because Natrice East is not taking part in the 100. East focusing on the 200 only. As we go through the lineup, Mackenzie Crabb of the British Virgin Islands will start in lane number two. Have to imagine she's related to Dion Crabb. Comes in with a 12.68 seed time. Might have to improve on that. Well, will have to improve on that if she is to make the championship race later on. She starts in lane number two. Here's a look at the lineup. Crab goes in two. Tiana Richardson of Trinidad and Tobago in three. Pashana Lee Blake of Jamaica in four. J.D. Manuel of St. Lucia in five. Kimia Phipps of St. Kitts and Nevis in lane six. Aneta Mitchell of Anguilla in seven. And Kiana Henschel of the Bahamas in lane number eight. Blake of Jamaica, the clear favorite in uh, this heat. And remember, only the fastest, only the winner of each heat advances on position. Right now, 12.75, the number to look at in terms of the bubble number. Lane number two, representing the BVI. A couple of athletes here who've been in the low 12s. I think J.D. Emanuel produced a sub-12 run towards the end of last year. Kiana Richardson, Trinidad and Tobago, 12.27. J.D. Emanuel, lane six, representing St. Kitts and Nevis. Kimaya Phipps. Third and penultimate heat of the under-17 girls. 100 meters, Phipps of St. Kitts and Nevis, delighted to be here at the Carifta Games, broad smile. As a pensive looking Aneta Mitchell of Anguilla stands in lane number seven, there is Henschel of Bahamas in lane eight. On your marks. Semi-final round of the under 17 girls, 100 meters. We had preliminaries scheduled for this morning. Not contested as all the athletes were advanced to this stage. Finals will be this evening. The fireworks to conclude the opening day. Stand up, stand up. Yeah, once again, another issue at the start. We've seen this all day. And once again, the competitor has been asked to stand. It's good experience for the athletes, but it's not what you want to happen. Certainly, you want them to, to be able to have the experience of being in the best position to perform well. 12.85 is the bubble time at this stage. 12.75. Yes, correction, 12.75 is the bubble time at this stage. Sah of Guadeloupe, 12.44. Tobias of Trinidad and Tobago, 12.50. Wallace of the Bahamas, 12.54. And Jones of Bermuda, 12.75. Those are the ones on the bubble. 
We take the four automatic qualifiers. That's the four heat winners. Hinkson of Guyana already through. So too Etienne of Dominica. Set. Up they go for the third and penultimate heat. Pashana Lee Blake of Jamaica got away well, but she has competition from Emmanuel of St. Lucia. And Emmanuel of St. Lucia pushing Blake all the way. Blake just holds on and goes sub-12 as well. 11.94. But that's a brilliant run coming from Jada Emmanuel of St. Lucia. And that, I think, should be good enough to get her into the final as well. She gave Pashana Lee Blake all she could handle in that first round heat. Semi-final round heat, 11.98 is the time for Pashana Lee Blake of Jamaica. A really nice run from Emmanuel coming out of Chozelle in St. Lucia down on the southwest coast. Um, you see her coming out there and uh, not the tightest of technique but she is giving it uh, all and she is really pushing Pushan Ali, uh, to the utmost both of them battling to the line and uh, Blake just being able to come up with it you see that lack of relaxation uh, by the young St. Lucian 15 years old her first time on the Carifta stage um, perhaps just costing her towards the end of that race and uh, Emmanuel 12.03, Blake 11.98, Richardson 12.28, Crab 12.40. So a number of those young ladies who were on the bubble are uh, now unfortunately off it. If they were in uh, world competition, Ricardo, they would be in the bubble room. And exiting just about <laughs> now. As uh, on the bubble now. We have Emmanuel of St. Lucia leading that with 12.03. Interestingly, that was the first race where we had a positive wind. And so the negative wind would have affected the athletes in the previous heats. And so Jada Emmanuel at 12.03. Tiana Richardson of Trinidad and Tobago at 12.24. Mackenzie Crabb of the British Virgin Islands, 12.40. And... Uh, Saha of Guadeloupe at 12.44. Now all on the bubble as we get ready for the fourth and final heat. This should be a good one. It includes Anaya Nurse out of Barbados, a finalist last year. And she is hoping to return to the championship race. There's the full lineup. Naima Fontaine of Martinique. Ayan Adams of St. Kitts and Nevis. Adora Campbell. A late addition to the team representing Jamaica goes in four. Anaya Nurse of Barbados in five. Egypt Benjamin of Grenada in six. And Emily Pennell of French Guiana in lane number seven. On your marks. Uh, this one may push Saha finally off that bubble, unfortunately. I think we should anticipate a couple of qualifiers coming out of this meet, if not more. Anaya Nurse goes in lane number Five. Can she return to the final? Sixth in the final last year. Also anchored the Barbadian silver medal winning team at 4 by 4 Set. Pretty good 400 runner as well. Off they go. Oh, that was a really quick start. Coming from the Ketitian. Ian Adams in lane number 3. The recall gun was pretty quick as well. Yes, um, I, I think it was a pretty clear for the start. You see the camera already training on that young lady's back and we'll get the indication from the oh yes way out unfortunately of course we'll get confirmation from uh, the starters momentarily she doesn't look very confident about what's to come moving around in that lane number three hopeful at this stage that she will get a second opportunity never a nice feeling at any level and uh, she gets the reprieve green card fortunate I think the starters perhaps taking a little bit of responsibility there and marks. we are back underway and Adams of St. Kitts and Nevis survives and she will get an opportunity to compete in the fourth On and final marks. heat of the under 17 girls, 100 meters. What will she make of her reprieve? Fourth and final heat. Under 17 girls, 
Fontaine, Adams, Campbell, Nurse, Benjamin, and Panel. Campbell of Jamaica, Nurse of Barbados, the big two in this semi final heat. Set. Off they go. Another really quick start coming from the Ketitian. Ian Adams. And surely this time it could be curtains for her 100 dreams. Another quick recall gone. Here's another look at it, yeah. Moved in the blocks and uh, came off early. And there she is looking once again at the starters. But even more nervous than the last time, understandably. Yeah, and surely she wasn't going to get a third opportunity. She sees red. Disappointing for her. No doubt about it. It's never easy having put in all that work and to be disqualified for a false start. start, start for me now. But she arm, did get a arm. second opportunity. Tend to arm the thing. So the field reduced by one. Five young All ladies remain marks. in this, the fourth and final heat of the 100-meter dash under 17 prelims. We've already seen the favorite for the 100 on the 17 girls title. Hinkson of Guyana, Athalea Hinkson, won the first heat. 11.43, negative three wind, negative 3.3. She's in spanking Set. form. Off they go for the fourth and final heat. Adora Campbell of Jamaica and I, nurse of Barbados. And these two separate themselves from the rest of the field. Adora Campbell, the Jamaican, comes through to win it ahead of Nurse. That's a pretty nippy time as well. 11 6 0 for Adora Campbell of Jamaica. Yeah, great flash time for 11 uh, 60. Uh, she'll be delighted with her performance. Uh, pretty uh, easy run for 11 6 2. They rounded it to two. She's pleased. Nurse will be pleased as well. She will have pushed Saha out of uh, contention. It's pretty much all Adora Campbell in this one. Nurse giving chase, but clearly second best on this occasion. Adora Campbell continuing her fantastic form from the Jamaican High School Championships where she had a silver medal performance in the under 15 girls class three category in a personal best 11.52. She gets through qualifying here at 11.62 with an iron nurse of Barbados 11.82 also getting into the final. Egypt Benjamin of Grenada 12.31. That will also get her into the final. 12.66 from Fontaine of Martini will not be good enough. Earlier today, we had three finals in the field. The high jump for under 17 girls we also had the javelin throw for under 17 boys and the shot put for under 17 girls and we're going to show you now what happened in that under 17 girls event terrell mccoy here of the bahamas came in as the favorite sprung into action in the fifth round but her mark of 14.11 was only good enough for bronze peyton the winter of trinidad and tobago got over 14 meters on two occasions her fifth round effort of 14.21 secured her the silver for medal but no one could deny this young lady jamelia young of jamaica a fourth round effort of 14.25 meters took the lead and it held the lead she had two marks 14 meters or better her sixth round was 14.00 but by then she'd already won the gold medal more known for her discus exploits but she is the shot put on the 17 girls champion and she's with gerard marcelli off uh jamelia you are known more for your discus exploits but yeah that's the point that ricardo just left us with let's pick up from that one winning a shot put how do you feel about that i feel so amazing like i didn't expect it 
because my PB is 13 for the four and to come here and execute my 14, it's so amazing. Like, I got a set of instructions from my coach and I just went out there and executed that. Yeah, that 14.25 throw came in your fourth attempt. Uh, you didn't look too happy with the, the performance that we saw there, but uh, it seemed to be pretty uh, happy with it. Now, winning this medal for Jamaica, another gold medal added to the tally, yeah, how does it feel to be able to represent the country and, and bring home gold? I feel amazing, and I'm just happy that I went here to Grenada for my first time and leave my name here on the mark. Will we see you in the discuss? Repeat? Will we see you in the, in the yes, discuss? Yes, you will. All right, well, we, we wish you all the best. All right, congratulations once again. Thank you. Back to Ricardo, who has more 100 meter action for us. Yeah, thank you very much, Gerard Marcelli. As we get ready for the under 17 boys, 100 meters, the record 10.34 set in 2007 by Dexter Lee. He, of course, represented Jamaica. Here's the lineup for the first of three races. And what a lineup it is. Vion Claxton of Anguilla, Miles Outerbridge of Bermuda, Cameron Powell of Trinidad and Tobago, Nyron Wade of Jamaica, Ishmael Roll of the Bahamas, Teandre Fret of the British Virgin Islands in seven. They are sent on their way. Wade of Jamaica got up well. Also moving well, too, is the Trent Begonian. He is flying. And now Wade steps forward, roll. Last year, silver medalist pulls up. And that's a big miss from the event. 10.66 for Wade. He qualifies to the final. The top two, sure to be there later on. But we've had a big one. Ishmael roll of the Bahamas, second last year to the Jamaican Tremaine Todd. And he's pulled up about 70, 75 meters in. Will not be in the final as Nairo and Wade goes through to take the win in 10.72. Well, one just hopes that he's able to take further part in the game because he is an excellent competitor and uh, we would love to see more of him. Uh, at this stage, though, he didn't look as though he was going to be a uh, principal challenger, really, for uh, this heat. Um, and uh, it was fairly straightforward work for Naren Wade winning this one, number 406. Very good run from Cameron Powell of Trinidad and Tobago. I think he got the second automatic spot. Yes, he did. Indeed. Minus 2.5, 10.72 for Wade, 10.90 for Cameron Powell of Trinidad and Tobago. Those two are through. Teandre Fret, 10.92 for the British Virgin Islands. He has a real good shot of being there as well. And Ishmael Roll at 11.26. Well, I'll say he'll have to wait and see, but I'm not even sure he'll be in the state to compete in the final, even if he does get there. Second of uh, three semi-finals. This one will see athletes from Haiti, the British Virgin Islands, the Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, Curacao, Guyana, Turks and Caicos Islands, and uh, the US Virgin Islands. On your screen right now, Everett Fraser, of uh, the Bahamas now perhaps carrying the hopes yeah, of uh, the Bahamas in this event. Yeah, Marvin Delpe of Haiti will go in lane number one, Mario Carter of the British Virgin Islands in two, Everett Fraser, the Bahamas in three, Kadim Chidapu of Trinidad and Tobago, I have a lot of time for him, Ramije DeWitt of Curacao, Scarlett Charles of Guyana, Dane St. Hilaire of Turks and Caicos and Micah Dominique of the U.S. Virgin Islands in lane number eight. A first look at Kadim Chinapu of Trinidad and Tobago. A lot of his times this season has been wind assisted, but there is no doubt that that young man is full of quality. He goes in lane four as we look at Fraser from the Bahamas in three. Here's Chinapu. Comes in with a time of 10.52. Yeah, that 10.52, positive 3.5 meters per second. So a lot of help with that. And there's the Guyanese. Well, they have looked brilliant today. Skylar Charles will fancy his chances here, has a 10.92 to his credit. And we know that most of the Guyanese have been running faster here at Carifta so far. And if that trend continues, then expect him to be in the final. It's the top two who will be safe. Trinapu won't have things his own way. Won the sprint double at the Trinidad and Tobago trials. Told me yesterday he feels he's in the shape to go 
here at Carifta. Here's the start of his journey. He goes in lane four. Set. Off they go. Chenapu got away well. So too from the Bahamas, Fraser. Chenapu and Fraser right together. Now Chenapu steps ahead and wins the semi final in 10.92. Did a lot of the work late in the race. But he got the job done nonetheless, and he qualifies for the final of the under-17 boys 100 meters. A returning finalist from last year, but this time around he has a genuine shot at a medal. Yeah, and he came through pretty easily, and we'll certainly be looking forward to improving on his performance in the final. We had a negative win in the first heat, minus 2.5. You see Chinapu there, a decent drive phase. Uh, holds it, uh, maintains his acceleration, and just uh, pulls away from Fraser going into the last phase of the race. Has time for a quick glance over. We all know who made that famous. <laughs> 10.96 for <laughs> Chinapu, negative 1.4. Everett Fraser, 11.06. And the wind of Curacao at 11.19 still has a chance of being in the final. That means officially last year's silver medalist, Ishmael Roll of the Bahamas, is out and cannot make the final. Still the fastest bubble time, 10.92 for Tiandre Fritt of the British Virgin Islands as we come to the third and final semi-final race in the under 17 boys 100 meters this one includes one of the breakout athletes from jamaica this year malik nugent he goes in lane number four Kenneth nixon of grenada in one michael vanderveer of st martin in two shirkwan joseph of st lucia in three nugent of jamaica in four zion sambo of curacao in five ezekiel millington of guyana six javante hurst of the u.s virgin islands in seven and samele Palomide of Guadeloupe goes in lane eight. Third and final semi-final heat in the under 17 boys 100 meters. There is Malik Nugent has gone as fast as 10.52 has been really consistent all year. And we'll hope to continue that consistency. As we go through the lineup, Nixon of Grenada, Van de Vera of St. Martin, Joseph of St. Lucia. There is Joseph of St. Lucia. There's Malik Nugent, 10.52 twice this season at the Carifta Trials and at the Jamaican High School Championships. Samba from Curacao is a 10-6-3 performer. Great chance to get into the final. Once again, the center lanes will be the center of attraction, Terry. Yeah, Sambo, of course, coming from Curacao, uh, produced Tarandi Martina. They'll be looking forward to seeing him On making it into the final of this event alongside Nugent. Nugent in four, Samba in five. Two 10-8 sprinters, Joseph of St. Lucia, Millington of Guyana in lanes three and six. Third and final semi-final in the under-17 boys, 100 meters. Stand up. Not the break at the start. Go to, 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 to that guy. Just go and tell him that. He must. Just go and tell him. More instructions coming through from Chief Starter Ludlow Watts. Juan Joseph uh, from Sufre in St. Lucia. 
home of the Pitons. I gather you know a little bit about that. It's a nice place to be. When you've um, established your vacation home in Grenada, you can pop over to St. Lucia for a visit. How did you know that I was going to do that? Uh, have I let the cat out of the bag? <laughs> Set. Off they go. Third and final, semi-final. Joseph got away well for St. Lucia. Nugent gets into his running. Sambo of Curacao is going brilliantly. But Nugent steps ahead and wins the semi-final. Brings Sambo along with him. And the two, Jamaica and Curacao, getting through to the final of the Under-17 Boys 100. That was a good semi-final race. Yeah, it was. And uh, the two of them clearly very well aware of one another. Uh, and uh, they basically ran alongside each other um, all the way uh, to the line. 10.89, the winning time in this one. Yeah, New Gen didn't get away well. Joseph gone up brilliantly. Sambo got up well. Sambo really hammering the first 70 or 80, but then with the top end speed of New Gen kicking in, and the Sambo couldn't stay with the Jamaican, but knows he's done well to get into this final. There's Nugent, comfortable and easy, gets into the championship race as we have a look at the times. 10.89, positive 0, 0.0, 10.93 for Sambo, 11.24 for Van de Veer of St. Martin. That will not be good enough to get him through, so Curacao will actually have two in the final with Leica, his 11.19 from the previous heat. And uh, we also got a 10.92 from the first semi-final. Tiandre Fret of the British Virgin Islands will also be in the final later on. So Wade Nugent, uh, both from Jamaica, Chinapu and uh, Nathaniel Powell from uh, Trinidad and uh, Tobago uh, will advance uh, Zion Sambo. And as you said, uh, DeWint uh, from Curacao also in there along with uh, Everett Fraser from the Bahamas and Tiandre Fret from the British Virgin Islands. Should be a fine final. Coming now to the girls under 20, 100. A couple of events taking place in the field as well. In fact, three events taking place in the field. We have uh, the discus throw under 20 boys taking place. But let's uh, go to the girls. Yeah, first of uh, three semi-final races in the under-20 girls, 100 meters. In heat uh, one, we have uh, Tara Lafontaine, French Guyana, in lane two. Cheyenne Demerit of uh, the Bahamas in lane three. Tiana Lee Terrelong of uh, Jamaica in uh, four. Saraya Doreska of Haiti in five. Nalicia Glenn, Guyana, lane six. Rihanna Frederick, Grenada, lane seven. And uh, Candicia Mead of uh, Montserrat is in lane On your eight. Marks. Look out for Terrelong in four. In a lot of places, you'll see the Carifta record at 11.03. Aileen Bailey and uh, Tamika Clark, 1998. Those times not recognized by the world governing body, though, and the fastest recognized time in the history of the Carifta Games, 11.17, set by Alana Reed in the Bahamas last year. Set. Off they go for the first semi final. Terrelong of Jamaica easing into her running. Doreska of Haiti. Terrelong easy. She's going to come on the pressure from the Bahamian. But Terrelong holds on from Cheyenne Demerit of the Bahamas to take the first semi final and advance to the championship race later on. Remember the top two from each semi final race advancing automatically. And this young lady who has run 11.22 this season, making qualification look easy. Three heats, and uh, this one uh, starting off well. A solid run from Terrelong. Uh, we know that uh, a couple of the highly touted names are missing, but you can only run against who's there. And uh, she has begun her journey to gold in fine fashion. Would have been great to see a clash between Tiana Lee Terrelong and... Uh, 
Adeja Hodge from the British Virgin Islands. Adeja Hodge has said that she wants to concentrate on Olympic qualification, competing in Florida this weekend. And uh, Tiana Lee Terralong, though, is looking to win her first Carifta title. Was missing from the games last year after an under 17 100 bronze two years ago in Kingston. 1186, negative 0 0.5. Demerit also at 1186. Doreska of Haiti, 1199. We'll have a really good shot of getting into the final with that. And the Fontaine, 12 1 1 for French Guiana. Montserrat has never been on the medal rostrum at the Carifta Games. Very difficult uh, maintaining their program, I'm told by coaches over there. With a lot of people uh, migrating to the UK. Mm -hmm. Best results, Lester Ryan, I think back in St. Lucia in 2009, he placed fourth in the 100. Second semi-final coming up in the under-20 girls, 100 meters. Jordan Thomas of the British Virgin Islands, Shatalia Dorset of Bahamas, Sabrina Dockery of Jamaica goes in four, Tamara Dorival of Haiti in five, Alexi Henry of Trinidad and Tobago in six, Alia Fanukia of Guadeloupe in seven, and Marie Miriam Duranti of Martinique goes in lane eight. Shatalia Dorset of the Bahamas fifth in the under 20 final last year but let's go from lane two that's jordan thomas of the british virgin islands there is dorset fifth place finisher last year wants to improve on that sabrina dockery brilliant at 100 200 and 400 has come down to the 100 this season also saw Dorival of haiti alexi henry bronze medalist in the under 17 category last year for trinidad and tobago Vanukia of Guadeloupe and Durante of Martinique. So good to see Haiti here with all of what's been going on in their country. Sending our best wishes uh, to the people of Haiti. Dockery of Jamaica started as a quarter miler. Showed tremendous potential at 200 meters. And this season she is come down to the 100 and gone as fast as 11.33. Has had some issues with false starts though over the last two seasons, including in the Carifter on the Sir? 20 final last year where she false started. Off they go. Pretty settled in the blocks there. Sabrina Dockery got away to a brilliant start. Dorset of the Bahamas also running well on her inside. Henry of Trinidad and Tobago coming through, but that's a brilliant run from the Jamaican. Sabrina Dockery looking in fabulous form. She looks businesslike as she qualifies for the 100 final. Led Tiana Lee Terralong for a long way at the Jamaican High School Championships. And uh, here comes through qualifying efficiently at 11.52. This girl does not know how to run slowly. Yeah, it was like a bullet from a gun uh, was uh, Dockery. Fine run, took care of business. Comes up and into her running. And away from the field, pulls away very efficiently from Dorset. Comes through big arm swing from her as she comes over the line. On the 17 silver medalist at 200 meters behind the Deja Hodge in Kingston, through to the 100 final. Negative 1.9, 1152. Dorset, 1195. Alexi Henry of Trinidad and Tobago, 12.04. That puts her on the bubble. No one else from that semi-final race will have a chance of getting into the final. So 11.99 for Doreska of Haiti and 12.04 for Henry of Trinidad and Tobago. Those are the athletes and their times on the bubble at this stage with one semi-final race to come in the under 20 girls, 100 meters. And this third heat has a lot of quality and it's expected to be a very competitive semi-final as well. Henry, a bronze medalist last year in the under 17 division, will be disappointed in herself. But one of several 17-year-olds here in the under 20, her first year 
in the under 20 division as we look at the heat number three British Virgin Islands Amaya Todman yes. she goes there as you see in lane two ringette Jesse Jessica ringette of French Guyana lane three Kishona Niles Barbados lane four Symphony Patrick of Trinidad and Tobago lane five Giulina Dowdy Antigua and Barbuda lane six Saran Abati Martinique lane seven and Kamisha Dominique, the hometown girl from Grenada, in lane eight. Jolena Dowdy of Antigua and Barbuda was fourth mark. in the final last year. But listen to this, Terry. 2023 Jolena Dowdy, fourth in the Carifta Under 20 final, fourth in the final of the NACAC Under 18 championships, fourth in the final of the Commonwealth Youth Games. She's in lane six, hoping not to be fourth, but a position much higher come the final. She has to get there first, though. The Antigua and goes in six. She's seen those medals. Set. Off they go. Patrick got up well. Niles of Barbados is running brilliantly. Jody has work to do. Kishona Niles steps away from the field. Battle is on for second. Jody gets there. 11.57 for Kishona Niles. Now at the University of Technology in Jamaica, where the outstanding legendary coach Stephen Francis has guided so many world-class talent. And Kishona Niles rounding into form at the right time and delivers 11.61 in her semi-final race. And if you know anything about a Stephen Francis program, it's that he knows how to get his athletes to peak. And Kishona Niles, I'm sure, is at peak form for the 100 meters here at Carifta. Yeah, Niles looking uh, very unbothered. Uh, she doesn't get necessarily the best of starts in this race, but uh, she overcomes that well. Uh, once she gets into her stride, she picks up easily, stays relaxed, stays easy, and uh, comes across easing past the Trinidadian as well as uh, the Antiguan, Patrick and Dowdy. 11.82 for Symphony Patrick. She will get into the final that means her teammate Alexi Henry is out. Dowdy back in a final here, 1174, with Niles winning at 1161, negative 1 1.7 meters per second, the wind speed. And so the non automatic qualifiers, Soraya Doreska of Haiti from the first semi final, and now Symphony Patrick of Trinidad and Tobago from this third semi final, all, well, both qualifying as non automatic entrance into the final As and Dowdy with the third fastest time going into the final not fourth <laughs> <laughs> she'll hope to be the third uh, she would love that at the end of uh, the final she would love that but I don't think um, in heat one we saw anything near the best of uh, Terra Long uh, and it's going to be a, a real battle for those uh, three medals later on this evening. It's more than conceivable that Dowdy could get fourth in that final again. Uh, very much so. The honor 20 boys, the record 10 1 1 held by Johan Blake. Here's the lineup. Lane two, the Jamaican based Nicarda Clark representing Antigua and Barbuda. Kadim Larcher from St. Lucia in three. Javorn Dunkley of Jamaica four. Jeremiah Adderley of the Bahamas in five. Aldrich Nisbet of St. Kitts and Nevis in six. Sanjay Weeks of Montserrat in seven. And Amelia Bishop of Grenada goes in lane number eight. There is 225. Amelia Bishop of Grenada, he gets a loud cheer from the crowd. They are hoping he can somehow sneak into this final. The favorite here, Javorn Dunkley of Jamaica, 10.17 at his best. That was last season, has gone 10.29 this year. Javorn Dunkley won silver in the under 20, 200 meters last year, has left high school early to join the elite performance track club led by Ronaldo Walker, who incidentally coached him in high school at St. Elizabeth Technical. And so the transition has been seamless since he's really enjoyed being part of the professional ranks and seeing some of the best athletes in the world, men and women around him. Set. Sent on their way. Oh, that was a really quick start from the Ketishan. Nisbet, Dunkley now steps forward. Jafor and Dunkley pulls away from the field. 
Terrific finish as well for Adelie of the Bahamas to get second position. But that was quite a performance from Javorn Dunkley. The 10-1-7 man gets through qualifying with a serious level of efficiency. Dunkley, a double medalist last year, took gold in the 4x1 and, uh, of course, as you said, silver in the 200. Very efficient, very easy run, basically walked them down. Doesn't look thrilled with his time, perhaps. It's 10.23, I don't know why. You see him there just pulling away from everybody else. It's maintaining that clean running form. The levers working efficiently, he has time to glance over, see what's happening with the clock. Good stride length, good stride frequency. 10.23 with a 1.5 meter per second wind. Yeah, he looks primed for something here. Jeremiah Adderley, 10.53, just outside his 10.50 personal best for the Bahamas. Bishop at 10.59, Weeks at 10.60, Nicarda Clark at 10.61, some really fast times. Larcher at 10.66, very fast semi-final of the under 20 boys, 100 meters, and that was one of four, so only the winner guaranteed a spot in the final plus the next four best on times and we'll see what happens with the remaining athletes as we get ready for the second semi-final coming up there is Jalen Reed twice a finalist at the under 20s spoke to him yesterday the Caymanian said to me that he was sick last year and uh, he has returned this time around to get what he believes he should have gotten a year ago. Of course, this countryman, Devontae Howell, won the gold medal a year ago. And uh, Jaden Reed now at the Louisiana State University coming for redemption. Louisiana State picking up a couple of additional recruits, in fact, from the Caribbean, a Vincentian duo. There is Reed. Going down uh, that list there, Jaden Reed, uh, Cayman Islands, you see from Haiti, Miles uh, Sasha Grandjean, Mikhail Bayer of uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Nora Robinson of Bermuda, and uh, Timothy Williams from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines, number two on a normal day. Note as well that I don't see Kia Davis of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the lineup for the under 20 boys, 100 meters. We'll do a check on that because that's a big miss. It's been in fabulous form this season. St. Vincent and the Grenadines breaking national junior records at 200 meters, high school championship records in both sprints. I think he was only included in uh, the 200 where he uh Set a national record, 20.87. Uh, a lot of people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are a bit surprised that he wasn't in the one Set. as well. Off they go. Jaden Reed got up well. Has pressure on his inside. But Reed looks left, looks right, and moves away from the field. Oh, that's impressive. Fine run from him. That is a brilliant, brilliant run. That's a, about as good a run as you can get at this level. Very good awareness of what's happening around him. Very good control of what he is able to produce. And he comes through the line. 10.29 seconds. I think he's a lot happier <laughs> than Dunkley was with that time. That so looks ominous, Terry. Yes, yeah, so I, can, I can run faster than that. So that, was a, that was a nice little warm-up. Caymanian junior record holder at 10.25. Remember, previously trained in Jamaica at Jamaica College and has transitioned to Louisiana State University. A couple of 100-meter races this season coming into this. Remember, with the collegiate athletes, they'll have the full indoor campaign. And so this is very early in his outdoor season. And he drops 10.29 in a negative 1.0. Samuel Green of Grenada at 10.60. Chesson Lybert of St. Kitts and Nevis at 10.73. And Grand Jean of Haiti, 10.84. Another very fast semi-final. But Jaden Reed looks in spanking form. 
And maybe he is right. Maybe he is ready to claim what many felt he had the ability to a year ago in a final that was opened up by the injury of Boaji and Kumi, the 9.99 Jamaican junior record holder, and the disqualification of DeAndre Daly, the 10.07 Jamaican sprinter. Devontae Howell took that opportunity, but maybe, just maybe, this year will be Jaden Reed's year, although we haven't seen Howell yet. He is still to come in the 100s for the under 20 boys. And Javorn Donkley of Jamaica at 10.23 didn't look bad in the first semi-final either. We're in for quite a treat, I think, in the under 20 boys, 100 meters. And after 10.29 in a minus 1.0, I have to remind you that the championship record is 10.11. Johan Blake. There's the lineup for the third semi-final. Jamar Saunders of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Dijon Francis of Bonaire. Carlos Brown, the reigning silver medalist from the Bahamas. Dylan Woodruff of Trinidad and Tobago. Dan Bezacine of Guadeloupe. Mehdi Jean Lee of Martinique. And Jaden Jackson of the British Virgin Islands. For semi-finals, the winner of each heat will advance along with the next four best times. Carlos Brown, the Bohemian, lane number four, came to Kingston in 2022 with high hopes as a 16-year-old. Did not make it to the final. It was a massive disappointment. He said he worked for an entire year and last year picked up the silver medal. As we go from the inside, there is Brown. 10.40, his best time. He's gone 10.37, that was last season. But based on what we've seen already in qualifying, may have to be in personal best form to have a shot at a medal. And there is a lot of quality coming up in the and fourth we, and, and final semi-final. We semi -final. have more to come, yes, yeah. more to come. On your marks. I fully expect three to qualify from the fourth and final semi-final. So that should give you an idea of the quality that's coming up. I really do believe you have to win this semi-final. Woodruff of Trinidad and Tobago has gone 10.49, but that was wind assisted. Brown is the favorite in four. Right now, the bubble time, 10.60, but Set. I think that that will change after this heat. Away they go. Good start for Francis up and near. Carlos Brown getting into his running now. Brown inches ahead, tight behind him. That was pretty close at the line, I think, as Jean Lee of Martinique, or was it Bizacine? It was Bizacine of Guadeloupe who came charging at the finish, but I think Carlos Brown just held on to get the win and advance automatically to the final. 10.90, not very fast at all, but as I said, I thought you had to win the semi-final because I didn't think that any non-automatic qualifiers would come from it. And at 10.90 for the winning time, no non-automatic qualifiers will come from this third and penultimate semi-final race. Yeah, d d competitive, yes, but uh, not a, a lot of quality in this particular heat. Not uh, the fastest of heats. And I think, uh, as you say, heat four, um, we should see some real battling going on. Um, we should see some strong running 10.90 for Brown, Ilan Bizasen of uh, Guadeloupe 10.92 and Woodruff 10.99 of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, they will have completed their participation in this portion of uh, the Carifta Games at this time. Yeah, tough for the athletes in this semi-final, by the way, to be fair to them because it was minus 3.6. So they ran into a pretty heavy headwind and that is always going to make life difficult. And the athletes in this fourth and final semi-final are hoping that it will not be as difficult for them. This semi-final includes the defending champion, Devontae Howell of the Cayman Islands. He away at university in the United States, of course, was always in the United States at IMG Academy. And now at the University of Tennessee, one race outdoors for him, 10.54 for the Caymanian defending champion. 
And everyone in this heat has gone under 10.80. You see the breeze picking up Denver Tucker from Bermuda in lane two. Devontae Howell of the Cayman Islands. He is uh, going to go in lane three. Watch out for him. Also watch out for Raheem Pinnock of uh, Jamaica in lane four. Johnny Daly and Tigan Barbuda. Jahil Cornett of Guyana and Jaquan Pilgrim of Barbados. Ashan Itali of Antigua and Barbuda, also at college in the United States. He's at Heinz Community College in Mississippi. Started his outdoor campaign with a 10.43 clocking, a personal best, positive 2.0 meters per second, the wind speed on that performance. On so he's in fine form as well. The Jamaican Raheem Pinnock has a 10.40 personal best from last season, has gone 10.43 this year. Howell 10.54 this se season, but just one race coming into this. This should be a really competitive final heat and uh, very likely to knock uh, those uh, two young men at 10.60 out of contention for the finals. Of course, if the wind behaves, don't want to see negative 3.6 again. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. And the competitors being asked to stand at the start of this one. It's a cracking semi-final race in the under-20 boys 100 meters. Four races at this stage for the under-20 boys. No qualifying heats for them this morning. On your marks. There's Raheem Pinnock. To think that DeAndre Daly, a 10.07 man, is still a junior, didn't compete at the Carifta Trials in Jamaica this year and then didn't make the final of the high school championship despite running 10.56. Pinnock got into that final. He's in four. Daily five. The defending champion Howell is in three. Set. Off they go. Quick gun. Howell got up well. So too did Pinnock. Ajani Daly just slightly behind and has work to do. It's Devontae Howell, the defending champion from the Cayman Islands. Daly comes finishing quickly. Powell has the feel. Howell has the feel well beaten. The Caymanians look in spanking form. It's 10.31 on the clock. That was very impressive. And he says to his countryman, Jaden Reed, he says to the Jamaican Javorn Dunkley, I am still the champion. 10.35, that's the season's best. Fine run for him, from him, um, uh, did not uh, take any prisoners, no nonsense mood, he came through um, uh, pretty quickly, had a solid drive phase, came through in order to qualify to the final, knew that he needed to win the heat, did just that. Looks as though he probably still has a lot left in the tank there. No theatrics, no histrionics, just uh, goes ahead and uh, wins his heat advance to the final in a fast time. The defending champion has very much arrived. Positive 1.7, 10.35. Ajani Daly, 10.53. He'll get into the final. Pinnock at 10.66 will not get into the final. The Jamaican. So two Caymanians will be there. And for the third straight Carifta Games, Ajani Daly of Antigua and Barbuda will be in the championship race as well. Two Bohemians also advancing into uh, the final of this event. So it's going to be a pretty interesting final. For sure, it will be. The Vincentian fans, they didn't have Keir Davis in the 100 meters. They'll have him at 200, though, and they'll have a lot more action to enjoy on day number one of the 51st Corifter Games. We are in St. George's Grenada at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. We have so much more action coming up after this. Roma and AC Milan face off in an Italian derby in the first leg action of their UEFA Europa League blockbuster quarterfinal, it goes live on Thursday, April 11, 2 p.m., 3 p.m. ECT on Sportsnet. This could be one for the history books when the Titans face the Kings on Thursday morning. 
Watch at 10 in the Eastern Caribbean, 9 in Jamaica on Sportsmax and on the Sportsmax app. Experience Sportsmax. Download the app now. The most fierce warriors in Spain. The scales head to head are almost balanced with Real Royal tipping the scales. The showdown news Sunday, the 21st of April. El Clasico on your home of champions. Get ready for the ultimate showdown in the Jamaica Premier League penultimate round, and the stakes couldn't be higher. First up, brace yourselves as Malines United take on Waterhouse FC at 3.30 p.m., 4.30 ECT, followed by Arnett Gardens clashing with Portmore United at 6 p.m., 7 ECT. It's a battle for glory. Catch all the heart-pounding action live on Sportsmax 2 and Scene TV. Old world charm meets the modern game. Welcome to Charlestown, South Carolina. Defending champion Ons Jabor and world number five, Jessica Pegula, lead a field of seven slam champions as they turn up the heat in the WTA 500 event, the Credit One Charleston Open. Watch from April 2 to 7 on your home of champions on Lock Sports Max. Get the app today. Back at the Karana James Athletic Stadium in St. George's, Grenada. Evening session of day number one of competition. We've had a great day. The morning session, exciting three finals. Then we had the opening ceremony at about 1.30 local time. Make that 2.30 local time. And now we are into the evening session. We've seen semi-final action in the 100 meters. The 1500 finals are coming up on the track. And in the field, we have the triple jump final for under 20 girls. Yanis David is the record holder, 13.40 her mark that was set in 2015. And this competition currently being led by Richelle Stanley of Jamaica with a best mark of 12.58. You're looking at competitor 209, Leon Alfred of French Guiana, second at the under 20 on, at the under 17 level last year. She is outside the medals at this time, 11.90 her best mark so far. Let's see if she can improve on that. No, she can't. That will be a red flag for Leanne Alfred of French Guiana. Of course, Yanis David representing Guadeloupe went on to represent France internationally, attended the University of Florida. Next on the runway, Alyssa Diet of Antigua and Barbuda, bronze medalist a couple of years ago in Kingston. Can she return to the podium? She needs a mark better than 12.20. If she is to do that, shows real purpose down the runway, the Antigua, and hits the board really well. But is that better than 12.20? If it is, she'll move into the bronze medal position at least. Got the white flag. And steps away, hopeful that this is a mark good enough to give her her second Perifta medal in three years. 12-0-6. Not good enough to get her into the medals. Disappointing for her. When she won the bronze medal in Kingston, she jumped 12-0-4. So she has better that we are in the fifth round now of the competition, I'm told. And there is competitor 59, Lanisha Lubin of Bahamas, silver medalist last year, Lubin. Lubin, uh, in a little bit of a rush to get going. See her series there. 
12-0 for her best in the second round. The situation is the same. Needs 12-20 or better. Well, needs better than 12-20 to move into the bronze medal position. Won't happen for her there. Missing her rhythm. Didn't quite get the second phase right. Let's move down to competitor 3-4-1. Dejane Bruce of Jamaica. Her best mark, 12.20. But I think she is in fourth position on count back here. Because St. Hilaire of Guadeloupe also has a 12.20. Dejane Bruce down the runway. Not sure that's enough, but we wait and see. She needs to go better than 12.20 to have the bronze medal she is the one sitting just outside the medals at this stage and the jamaican trying to make a move there in round number five well, that looks to be um, somewhere in the region of uh, that uh, early 12 meter region we'll get a call momentarily 12 uh, at this level the the patience that you need for developing triple jump is often found wanting here Saint is Saint Hilaire she's in the bronze medal position at this stage opening round effort of 12.20 but based on what we just saw there it means that Dejane Bruce with that 12.09 has gone into the bronze medal position on count back on count back and so saint hilaire now has it all to do and she couldn't do it in round number five saint hilaire long jump under 17 medalist last year took the bronze now she's trying to head up category and uh, contesting uh, the triple jump here Shelburne of Trinidad and Tobago big personal best 12.49 meters to be in the silver medal position tall and rangy and looking beautiful for the event her coach says beautiful as well as she gets the white flag 12.49 has her in the silver medal position. She needs 12.59 to take the lead. There's a bit of advice from a coach, uh, probably somewhere in that same 12, uh, 12 30, 12, 40 region. 12.35. 12, 12.35 12 meters. She stays in the silver medal position, but showing very good consistency here. Time now to see the leader, Rochelle Stanley of Jamaica. 12.88, her best coming into this competition, has gone 12.58 so far. Tries to get some support from the crowd, does Stanley. There's her car, 12.58, came in the first round, had a 12.56 in round three. Three of her four efforts have been over 12 meters. Tries to get the rhythm right. Stanley goes big. Again, an effort in excess of 12 meters. The 1500 final for under 17 girls will be skipping across to that shortly because that's off and running. As Stanley waits for her mark, the leader in the triple jump. 12.29, 12.58, still her leading mark. She remains in the lead in this competition, and uh, we switch over to the 1,500 meters. This is the under-17 girls, Annalisa Brown-Grenada. 
Aniko Bailey, Trinidad and Tobago, Shan Lewis, Trinidad and Tobago, Hester McKinnon, Guyana, Alikila Blucher of uh, Guyana, Kessian John, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Kate, uh, Olive Grenada, and uh, Taner Gardener of uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands. Yeah, the athletes sorting themselves out in the early stages of this 1500 final for under 17 girls. Dana Marie Barbie of Curacao, the silver medalist from last year, but there are two Jamaicans who have gone faster than her this season. Led, of course, by Alike Reynolds, last year's 800 champion at the under 17 level. And Dalia Fairweather has gone 441. Reynolds 439.40 as a competitor 228. Annalisa Brown of Grenada leads the way with the Jamaicans now stepping forward to take charge. Dana Marie Barbie finding herself at the back of the pack, but she will gradually move forward. Two Trinbagonians in the lineup as well, and they are moving through. Anika Bailey has gone sub five minutes. And there is also Cheyenne Lewis of Trinidad and Tobago. The two Jamaicans and the two Trinidadians will have worked out their plans, figure out how they can maximize one another. Kessie and John of St. Vincent and the Grenadines also in the leading group of seven at this stage. And look at Barbie of Curacao just come through on the outside just trying to ensure that she gets in a good position the two Trinidad and Tobago athletes moving through really well at the moment too Bailey and Lewis three and three quarter laps of the track hey, Reynolds going to the front Lewis of Trinidad and Tobago still hanging in there looking for Anika Bailey her teammate who is hanging just off the pace in fourth but not out of it 200 meters to go the two Jamaicans have taken over at the top of the race with the Trinidadians giving a chase Barbie out of it at this stage is going to be Jamaica unless one of the can have something to say about it. Alike Reynolds with the advantage. Dahlia Fairweather on her outside. The Jamaicans are going to be one and two. This is going to be a terrific finish. Dahlia Fairweather gets the better of Alike Reynolds. That's not happened too often this season, if any at all. Well, that's a big performance from Dahlia Fairweather. She strikes Karifta Gold from the Eastern region. They don't always produce national representatives at this level, but they have a Karifta gold medalist now. Dahlia Fairweather strikes gold as the Jamaicans finish 1-2. 4.45, 86, not the fastest she's run this season, but in a championship.